What's up folks, I'm your favorite lobster trucker, RG with RGB TV. And I'm broadcasting live. No, not really. Just a recording video. Uh, here in the great granite state of New Hampshire. Uh, probably can't see out my window, but lots of snow on the ground. So, you know, there are places to shoot outside, but, you know, it's kind of a pain in the ass to get to. I don't have a snowmobile. That isn't on my list, though. I will get one eventually. Um, all right, folks. So, what are we going to do today? Oh, boy. Uh, we got so many videos to do. So many, so many, so many, so many videos. All right. Um, well, I think we'll do the new, the new toy, right? We'll do the new toy. Okay. All right. I'm just going to show you the box this came in. So maybe this will give you a hint on what it is. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Beretta, Beretta, Beretta. But look at that case. Look at that case. Isn't that a nice case? Look at that. It's waterproof. It's waterproof, guy. Check this out. Yeah. Figure out this camera thing. There we go. Nice. It's got a, uh, got a drainage plug or something right there. I don't think you can see that. Um, yeah. So you know that this is top notch for other stuff. All right. So normally I do videos with my cell phone. Uh, I've got like a regular camera on my computer, so I'm still getting used to this. I'm, uh, way behind on the game of uh, you know vlogging whatever the hell you want to call it um, all right folks here it is right here can you see that right there right there look at that oh isn't she sexy hmm mm, 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 mm. Hmm. She's hot. So let's cool her down a bit. Got the one out of the chamber. Mag is out. Boop. Nothing in there. So. Anybody guess what this is? Well, Ernest Langan had something to do with it. This is the Beretta 92G Centurion Elite LTT. This thing is freaking awesome. This has had the LTT trigger job. I got all the stainless parts in here. Got the N3, and uh, was it the MP3 coating? Um, yeah, the Wilson Combat battle sights. You've got the fiber optic sights there. See that show up at all. I don't know if that would show on the video or not, but uh, it does show up pretty good. Um, I do have the uh, Streamlight TLR1HL. This thing is pretty great. So you have the uh, light that just stays on, on one side, and then you get the paddle that uh, just comes on periodically or whenever you hit it, and then double tap, and you get the strobe effect. Uh, but that we're not going to do a bit, uh, video on that right now. But this uh, Streamlight TLR on. I think it looks better than the Surefire, probably because of this uh, ring right here. Um, and it fits. It's uh, it's a little bit smaller. I'm going to get some more light on the subject so you can kind of see. Oh, you can see those nice lines. Everything's stainless. Um, this, this grip. Wow. This is nice. I mean, look at my hands. I'm a big guy. I'm 6'2", 6'3". Um, you know, I weigh about 280 pounds. I'm like 
you know, I'm like freaking Sasquatch, okay? And, I mean, this kind of looks like a compact gun in my hand. But as you can see here, without, without the mag in there, I can still get a good purchase on that grip, right? So, I mean, that's pretty nice. Yeah, there we go. That's some good light. Sorry about the lighting in here, guys. I will do a better job with that later on. But this is fantastic. Everything about this is great. Uh, everything about this, all the action is so smooth. Um, the uh, From the double action pull, I mean, that's just so smooth. And then the single action, you know, and then the reset. Right there, boom. I mean, it's you can't get much better than that. I mean, this is freaking great. I want to swear, but I'm trying to keep my keep the cuss words out of my vocabulary this video. Um, all right, so let's go. Everything I don't know if you can see right there a little bit. Maybe I can use my cell phone and we can get a little bit of light on here. Ah, there you go. So you can see in there that recess crown. They call it like a target crown on the barrel. All right, so that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, you get the sculptonized uh, hammer. You get all these stainless parts with the coating on them, uh, the stainless takedown. Uh, let me adjust this camera and bring it down just a little, a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. Um, get a little bit closer to. Uh, there we go. Um, so let me take this light off. That way, you get a better look at everything. All right. Ah, there she is, old Nikki. All right. So as you can see, they didn't. They didn't uh, round this off, but everything is beveled. They they smooth down all the edges on this. Um, you know, you've got the oversized mag release here, uh, which is great. Uh, the texture on it is phenomenal. It sticks out great. I mean, you know, I can I can press that. Let's see, there we go. I can press that fine. Um, and then of course you got the barrel that's stainless, but it's not a glossy finish. So this is a, like a satin brushed or you want to call it like a, a matte, um, like a noxidized finish, I guess. Um, which is great because even though, you know, it's stainless, it's not reflecting light that much. There is a little bit of a shimmer, but it's not that bad. In, like on the video, it you can kind of see it shining, but in person, for some reason, it's not it's not really shining that bad. Um, so that's something that um, I kind of like because I don't, you know, the glossy stainless looks great and everything, but it's just not ideal for carry. Um, so you can see here, I'm trying to get some more light on this, so you can see, but you've got. Um, some front serrations here for press check, and then you have the rear serrations there for um, racking. Um, and then, of course, you've got a rail here. Uh, this is only a single slot, and I believe for the Streamlight TLO, yeah, I used the 1913 um, adapter for, as far as the key for the slot goes. So that's what I used on this, and it fits perfect. The actual 92 one um, did not fit at all. It was just way too loose, and it was too skinny and too high. Um, so I'm trying to like hold this in a way, but my hands are so freaking big. So yeah, my hands are so big that I make this thing look tiny. This is a Centurion. So uh, if you don't know, uh, Centurion basically is the full size grip with the compact slide. I, I mean, they say it's a compact, but I mean, 
the uh, original 92FS, M9, whatever, it, it's a 4.9 barrel, and then this barrel is like 4.25. So you're looking at less than three quarters of an inch shorter. That's it. I mean, it's really not that much shorter. And as far as 9mm is concerned, um, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to affect this, like three quarters of an inch or even an inch difference. You go from a five uh, inch barrel down to like a four inch barrel or even a three inch barrel, it's not really going to affect it uh, all that much for the nine millimeters, uh, just the way that it's designed. So, um, so let's look here. As you can see, get some light on there. Uh, there we go, sort of. <laughs> I'm trying to show you guys. There's some um, uh, front serrations and also uh, some checkering there um, on the front of the grip. And then, um, see ya. And then on the rear, it's. God, you guys are going to hate me on this video. Eh. There we go. So you can see a little bit. I'll do a better job next video. I'm trying to get better lighting in here. But um, you get some really good stippling here. I wouldn't say checkering. It's more stippling than anything because it kind of it really bites. It's raised up. Um, but you get you get a really really great um, uh, purchase on this. I mean, it's phenomenal. So I'm just, I'm not going to put one in the uh, the chamber, but I'm going to put the mag in. The mag is loaded, people. Oh, another thing with these mags, 18 round mags, these are the Metgar mags, and uh, from LTT, these are MP3 coated as well, which is great because it's almost like a, a natural lubricant. So it just keeps everything um, nice and smooth. So you can see here now. I got all kinds more space. I mean, it gives me like an extra quarter of an inch, maybe, or eighth of an inch uh, space for my pinky. Um, this is great. So let's take the mag out again. Um, so yeah, the weight on this is great. Um, with the light, I'm just gonna put this down for a minute so we can just talk. Um, so with the light on, it definitely balances the um, the muzzle flip out just a bit and uh yeah so the light on it is great the stream light um it's not like the best one it doesn't have like the laser or anything like that but i mean i believe that the fire rod optic it really does sh show well and when you have that light on that fiber optic um uh, piece in there that absorbs the light from the flashlight. So when you have the flashlight on at night, you don't even need night sights. I mean, as long as you have a good flashlight, you don't even need it because that just pops out and you can you can grab those sights pretty easily. So, um, you know, there's really not much I want to change on this thing. Uh, I'd say lighten up the D-spring or something like that, but I mean, I've watched a bunch of other videos where they've actually done the um the the pull on it with the weight gauge and the, the trigger gauge and uh it really doesn't make that much of a difference um you know unless you're like super weak handed i don't know what to tell you use one of those things that that makes your hands stronger or something like that grow a pair i don't know what to tell you i mean you know uh the, the that 12 pound d spring that they've got i mean I, I don't know if it's even worth it to be honest with you i mean it's really not that much of a difference from what i've seen so the the one that's in here is just as good um check this again clear um you know that that pole i mean it's it's fairly light you know you know, everything about this is light. The, the um, single action is pretty light. Reset is crazy short. Double action is smooth. Uh, it's not really much more to say about this. I mean, this is a great, uh, a great pistola. And um, they did a great job uh, with this. You know, just um, 
you know, with the, the grips and the action and, you know, really tuning this up really wonderfully and just making it more than just a gun. I mean, this is, this isn't just some crappy gun. I mean, this is, uh, you know, this is like your best friend. You know, take really good care of it. You're going to spend the spend the amount of money that they charge for this. Um, take care of it. Do a really good job taking care of it. Uh, don't overclean it. Watch some videos. Ernest Langdon actually puts out some videos on how to properly clean your firearm and what types of stuff to use. Uh, stuff that isn't so damaging. Because, um, you know, one of the reasons why the um, a lot of guys in the military... Um, never liked the 92s uh, or the M9s. Um, it's because they they had just used them over and over and over again. They never changed out the springs. Um, you know, they put like 10, 20,000 rounds through those things. And then they did, they either over clean them or they didn't clean them enough. And so, you know, if you're over cleaning them, you're just going to wear it out. And you're going to, uh, it's just breaking down stuff inside. You know what I mean? Um, if you're not lubric if you're cleaning it too much and then not lubricating enough, it's not going to work right. If you don't clean it enough, all that gunk gets in there. That's going to ruin the action. And it's not like they were giving them um, really tuned up stuff either. You know, they were just giving them the crappy bottom barrel uh, M9s because they were reliable, they were accurate, and they were fairly cheap. Um, other than the price point, from what I hear, is that the uh, SIG P226 actually sort of won the contest to get that, um, that contract back in 19... Was it 1985, I think it was? Around there, uh, mid-'80s. Um, they sort of won the contest, I guess, you know, won the race, but um, Beretta uh, shined in price point because they were just so much cheaper. So... Um, but the, you know, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can look up the numbers. It's pretty much public knowledge at this point. Um, but the Beretta and the, the Beretta 92 platform, as well as the SIG P226, um, are, or anything along that SIG line. I mean, that SIG's a great, fantastic gun. And, you know, um, I should because they're, you know, they got a place right here in Exeter, New Hampshire. So I should get myself a SIG, right? I did actually have a SIG. I had a SIG uh, Ops 1911, but I traded it for an AK because, uh, you know, given the times, you need an AK. Get an AK in your life. Get a decent one. Yep. And then if you do, get yourself like a binary trigger. One of those, uh, was it Fostec Echo or something like that? They even have that Hellfryer static trigger. Oh, that thing. All right, uh, so uh, the, uh, I've had some questions about this with um, uh, with the light as far as holsters go, and I'm going to do a review on this. My next video is probably going to be all about holsters, um, but I'll, I'll just I'll show you this, but I'm not going to go into detail about it. Okay, so. This is the Filster floodlight holster. Um, these are specific to whatever flashlight you're using. Um, not necessarily the gun that you've got. It's more about the flashlight because the tension is around the flashlight. And then, you know, as you can see here, around the gun part is just like paracord, which I'm not a huge fan of. You know, I feel like it's not putting enough tension on the firearm, but. I mean, once it's in your pants with your belt and everything, not a big deal. I'm not a fan of soft straps. They do have clips, but the clips, they might as well be like down my pants and up my ass crack. I mean, it's just, I don't know. And then, um, you know, this mod wing here, they do have a claw you can put on it. I took it off. I'm a, I'm a big dude. I'm a fat dude. This, this is for skinny people. That mod wing, that's for skinny people. Um, right here. There's a piece that goes right here. It's a claw. They have two different sizes. 
and it basically goes on your belt and pushes your belt and then when it's pushing this part is pushing outwards it's pushing the other side in so that way the grip is into your body well I'm a fat dude I got low handles I got a belly all it's doing is pushing it right into my love handle um, and there's a lot of fat dudes out there like me and you know it's hard for us to be able to carry and might say oh go on a diet well you know I've been on a diet I, I eat fairly uh, healthy I, you know I don't drink soda I don't eat candy I don't eat uh, bread most of the time I eat chicken and broccoli and I'm a truck driver I try to eat healthy and stay away from all that truck stop garbage um, but uh, weight has definitely been an issue for me and so finding the right holster has always been a huge huge issue but for those of you who are not that um, <laughs> this would probably work good for you now mind you there's no sweat guard now personally I like a sweat guard not because it guards the sweat but because if there's another piece coming up I can actually get an undershirt and tuck it in behind it so that way the grips aren't scratching up my skin and then I can wear a, a shirt over that you know button up or something um, for the concealed carry so you know I don't know uh, it doesn't really work for me I do use it but it's not ideal for that reason but um, anyway so back to this baby uh, yeah beautiful again this is the 92 G Centurion Elite by LTT um, this is the upgraded version so you're getting the bevel package with the um, mp3 coding and all that trigger job um, get the nice uh, VZ grips and all that and the, the, the checkering on either side of the stippling uh, fantastic gun if you can afford it go grab yourself one it's great all right folks that be it for that review we are going to get a live fire in at some point we will just waiting for this weather to warm up so I can actually get my truck into the woods and we can do some live fire stuff which is going to be really really fun and uh, I might even try to do some stuff um, at night just so we can um, uh, show you a little bit more of a review when it comes to the flashlight but uh, guys I got um, I got a few other reviews I'm doing well let's see because I'm basically just gonna shut this off and do another review um, I've got we're gonna do some holster reviews I'm gonna go over the filter floodlight just a little bit more um, I've got a, a few holsters I want to go through. We're also going to do some reviews of some different flashlights that I bought for some, the guns that I have. And also, we're going to do a review on my uh, Beretta 92FS standard, but with the Recover Tactical Rail on. That's pretty awesome. So we're going to talk about all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I'm trying to think of what else we can do. Oh, I'll, I'm probably going to do a review of, uh, do a quick review of the GP100 because I did get a new um, uh, fiber optic sight on that, which is really, really easy to do. So, all right, folks, take care, stay safe, carry a weapon, abide by all your local, state, and federal laws. Don't get your ass locked up. Uh, what I would advise is go on uscc.com and they have a free reciprocity map on there. I would highly advise going on there if you travel for work like I do and you live in a state that issues um, permits for reciprocity like in New Hampshire. Um, there are states that don't like Vermont. Vermont doesn't. Um, it's a constitutional carry state even though they do have magazine limits. Um, but they don't issue permits for reciprocity. Uh, New Hampshire does. Most states do. Even if it's a constitutional carry state, they do issue um, uh, permits specifically for reciprocity, which is fantastic. Um, 
another thing is a lot of people think that you can't carry a weapon as a truck driver. Um, there is no law that says that you can uh, in the um, Federal Motor Carrier uh, book. Um, there's nothing in there that says anything about that. Um, so please lighten up with the messages about that crap. Um, it's basically with the company that you work for. You know, most of the bigger companies, Schneider, Warner, U.S. Express, they don't give a shit about your safety. They don't even let you have a pocket knife. Um, I think the pocket knife can be like no bigger than the width of your hand, something like that. Um, so if you're a woman with really small hands or even a guy with small hands, you're limited on what you can actually carry. Um, you can't use stuff like um, Hornet Hornet's, uh, Nest Spray. You can't use that for a lot of these companies. You can't even use like a tire thumper as a weapon to defend yourself. They just don't care. And um, there are truckers that get uh, robbed and killed every day, um, especially with female truckers out there. Um, it's very dangerous for them in some of these truck stops. And they go out there alone, and there have been uh, women that have um, lost their lives, you know, or have been raped. And so I'm a firm supporter or strong supporter of women carrying. Um, get I, you know, I know there's a lot of women out there that are afraid of firearms. Don't be. Go to your local gun store or search the web. Go on Google. Look for a club or something. Uh, I know right here in New Hampshire, there's a place that I like to go shoot called the Manchester Firing Line. And they do uh, gun safety courses, and they actually have a women's shooting club. So, and it's um, it's women that, that teach the class, um, and they all support each other, and they all teach you the, the basics um, of uh, gun safety, as well as gun maintenance, how to properly hold it, how to shoot. Um, they do drills. They do all kinds of stuff. So, um, I I'm, I support any law-abiding citizen who isn't reckless to go um, get yourself some training. Watch some YouTube videos. There's a bunch on there. There's all kinds of um, uh, firearm safety courses online that are free, uh, done by guys that work for like the FBI or whatever state police and um, they basically teach you the same stuff that you would learn in a class. But I mean, watch one of those videos. Go to a class. I know in a constitutional carry state, people just go and buy the gun, and then they, you know, they just try to like figure it out on their own. It's not a good idea, folks. Not a good idea. I wish there was more incentive that people did um, safety courses because uh, it's it's pretty necessary. Um, I do believe that everyone should have, again, everyone that can legally have a gun. That isn't a felon or victimizer. Um, should be able to own uh, a firearm uh, for the reasons stated in our Bill of Rights, our Second Amendment. So, um, but you need to learn how to use it. Got to learn how to use it. Got to learn how to do it safely, and got to use learn how to maintain it. Maintenance is huge. You can't just buy a gun and just stick it in your closet and that's that. Moisture gets to it. It has to be oiled. Um, you have to use the right cleaning solvents and you have to know where to put those solvents. You know, there's certain areas of the gun you don't want to put solvents. Um, and then you don't want to over oil it and get oil everywhere. You know, you only put oil on like the moving parts where metal meets metal. So there's all kinds of stuff, but that's just my recommendation. If you're going to get a gun, if you're, you know, in a state that like Tennessee or Texas that just said, "Oh, we're going to be constitu constitutional carry now," woohoo! And then everybody just goes out and buys guns, um, mainly because they had social anxiety or something, and they didn't want to go to these safety courses. Well, they got plenty of safety courses online. Watch them, and then uh, even reach out to a friend that is fairly knowledgeable about firearms and see if they can show you. But there's plenty of information out there, folks. So just go do it. All right. Carry a firearm, but do it safely. All right, folks. Uh, on to the next video. Take care. Bye-bye. This is RG with RGV TV, your favorite lobster trucker. Take care, folks.